Hello everyone, we would like to welcome everyone to the A-Wave user interface for the new DSP A6. It is a really high-end 6-channel DSP with 4 amplifier channels and an HD Bluetooth streaming inside. So a great benefit of that is having the DSP and an amplifier option and you no longer need to buy the dongle that has an inbuilt DSP Bluetooth streamer. So you get software from GT Trading, you load it onto your computer or where you're going to use it, choose the A6 and then connect. At the moment we're connecting offline and when you finished doing your settings you can connect to the processor on this menu, connect, and when you completed all your settings you can save them and then when you do connect you can pass it on to you can pass it on to your processor when it's open okay so today we're going to discuss the inputs on the options for your DSP the main input will cover your high level your high level harness it has optical and RCA in so if you use any of those you do your settings on main and those inputs will be saved under the main setting. Those that are set on Bluetooth, you basically will also save another setting, and you will access them when you have the controller, and you can choose between the main input and the Bluetooth input. Okay, so let's start with the main input, considering we have an RCA in. If we have a two-channel RCA in, we choose two-channel. This is a very nice user interface. It starts on the left, and you can progress through it. So you have a two-channel input, so all of your inputs will be from either one or two. If you had four-level input on high level, or you have four RCAs and you can set it to four-channel, and then you can choose the different inputs on all four, and then that will mix your subwoofer, if you have an external subwoofer. Right, so we do main, let's consider a two-channel input, that's high level or RCA or optical. And for this system, we're first going to try a basic system with a rear coaxial and a front split. So basically, you'll be using full range speakers for front and rear. How you go in there, you choose them. If there are anything else for this object, I'm just going to go through the menu settings. And here you choose full range because you're going to be using a full range set of speakers. So when you're in channel 1 and 2, you can link them together. And that will give you an option to do the settings together so that when you, so the first one it will be high pass, let's consider a high pass of 80 hertz for your front splits and 24 dB, then you choose your crossover slope. For a good sounding car you can just choose Butterworth, if you're going to compete and you want something more accurate and more detailed you probably can choose Linquits. Okay, so this one we're going to do for today's demo, we'll do Butterworth, then that's channel 1 and there's a high pass of 80 and when you click on the 24 high pass, it shows you the frequencies covered. When we go to channel 2, it'll normally be set. We'll choose what speaker's there, and again, it's a full range. So that's already on the default. And when you go to channel 2, high pass, 80, 24, and remember to put in the Butterworth. Okay, so this shows this, the frequency covered here. Channel 1 and 2 will be the same, you'll notice that. So that's because they're linked together, it's easy to get right. We'll do the same with the rears. They're also coming from channel 1 and 2 input. They are rear speakers. Left, the full range, that's already in the default. Then we link them together so they can copy each other again. Save that, and whatever we do in channel 3, so we click on channel 3, we set high pass for the rear speakers, again we'll consider an 80 hertz high pass, and we're using Butterworth, then crossover slope, that shows channel 3, and then when you click on channel 4, you'll see that it will mirror that. So those are your speakers you can consider using an amplifier or you can actually use the high power output on your harness. So this harness is 4x50 RMS, 4x50 
for your four speakers that you've chosen to run front and rear full pass. And your rear, you can just put a two channel or a single channel amplifier with a sub on, and then the processor moves to the subwoofer output. So again, we're using number one and two as your input, a two channel input from RCA or whatever. So we can link them again, choose channel five, and when you choose a subwoofer, you choose channel five, it will offer you a subwoofer crossover that you've already chosen for your high pass on your other speakers. So they will come together, just remember to change your crossover setting to Butterworth. There we go. And now you can actually see the frequencies that are being covered by your subwoofer. So that has got an 80 dB 24. You can have an 80 hertz 24 dB crossover or you can actually smooth that out for better integration. You can actually just move that and see how it sounds. You can move it down to 18 and you'll see your slope will be slightly more gradual. And then you can check on all your channels again. One is your high pass all the way to the top full range. Two, three, and four. Then five, and then six. Now that you've done these initial crossover settings, if you have the availability, you should probably test your polarity. If you didn't do the install and you're just tuning, so you can choose, check your polarity, and it'll be three green pulses and one red, and then you know your polarity. So you do your polarity before you do any delay on your system. So if you want to now consider doing a delay on your front and rear speakers to give you some time alignment, you do it after doing your polarity. You put in that you're going to measure it in centimeters, and then you just quite literally just enter 130 centimeters to the front left, and say 90 centimeters to your front right. You'll see that the timeline will round off. Say 140 to your rear left speaker. Then that back speaker is a bit closer to 85. And then by default, when tuning, you should probably just make your subwoofer a little bit further than your furthest speaker. So we'll make them 145 centimeters. Okay, 145. And then you've set your time alignment. So this time alignment will now actually give you an image and some full a center and maybe some surround sound aspect of the thing. So that's basically setting up to there. Once you have that set up, you can actually measure the SPL of each tone for each speaker at your seat, and then you can individually set the gain of each output as you can just bring it slightly down your main imp your main volume is here so if you want your processor or your it needs to be a bit louder and then you match your sub output by using this here so that you have an integration i would normally set the subwoofer about 10 db more than your front and rear speakers that's normally a natural house curve and you should be able to get that sounding quite smooth then after you do that, you can actually connect your RTA or program to change the frequency individually if you do have any dips or humps on your crossover. So this is for a two-channel setting on the main input. When you switch to Bluetooth, the Bluetooth option basically gives you the option to stream high res into this. You now would actually just search onto your device, find the Bluetooth, connect it A-Wave DSP A6, and now you have an HD streaming option into this processor from the back. You can actually see in the installation, there's your little aerial that extends the range of your Bluetooth signal. So when you set Bluetooth, you can actually set that all again on the same settings for the same system if you're using a front and a rear split. We will handle if we have an amplified system now. So any questions you can leave them in the comments below. That's for a full range two-way system using the DSP A-Wave DSP A6, an incredible new processor from A-Wave. Thank you.